One of the things that I think we all need to revisit occasionally, I think at least once a year, is the question of where is our time going? And maybe you actually revisit this more than once a year. I revisit this while I follow my own calendar in terms of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And then I modify my calendar um, usually at least once every couple of weeks. I'll, I'll, mod I'll make some changes to my calendar to continue optimizing it to make it even better. Because the, the ultimate question that all of us need to ask is, when I give energy in my business, am I also giving value to others? And maybe val hopefully also value to yourself and, you know, both. Because so many people, you know, sometimes I hear people say, gosh, George, I just give so much. I give so much, and yet I'm not getting things in return in my business. I give, I give people content, I give people free sessions, I um, answer questions in various groups, I give so much energy, but I'm not getting the return in my business. Well, here's what the reality is about giving, right? When you give energy, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like you are uh, you know, running, running in place, right? Are you running in place or are you running and actually making, <laughs> making progress? So let's talk about this. Um, where, where do you get the most engagement? That's really the first question I want to ask you. And you're welcome to comment below. Um, all the different places where you show up to share your um, business message, share your content, where do you get the most engagement? Do you get the most engagement on Instagram or on YouTube or on Facebook or, or, or where? Now, if you're, if you're doing it on Facebook and you don't understand Facebook ads, you're probably getting much more engagement on your Facebook personal profile. That's true for everybody before they start running ads. And once you start running ads, you're probably getting a lot more engagement on your business page, like I, like I do. So where are you getting the most engagement? All right. What type of people get the most value out of what you do, out of your content, out of your services, out of your products? What type of people get the most out of what you do, get the most value? Where you are getting the most engagement what type of people are getting the most value out of what you do? And what do you do for these people, both in terms of content, what kind of content do you create that gets the most engagement, but also what kind of services do you provide that gets the most value for people, that gives the most value to people, that gets the most, you know, my gosh, this changed my life, or this is really helpful. Where do you get that, that kind of reaction from people? Start to be more aware of this because if you can write this stuff down, okay, I'm getting the most value, or people are telling me they're getting the most value from me in these places, on these topics, okay, and these are the types of people who are telling me they get the most value, then you start, then you can start to see a pattern for where you should be spending your time. And then this, the next question I would ask you is, are you aware of, everything else you're doing in your business that's not getting the kind of impact and engagement that you that you would like to get so so there's essentially these two things you're asking yourself one is where am i where am i clearly giving the most value to people what platforms what topics what kinds of people are getting the most value from me what products and services am i selling that's that's giving people the most value Right, that's one side of things. And the other side of things is, where am I spending my time in my business? And when you compare these two things, you start to realize that there is often a mismatch between the two. And that's the recipe for burnout. That mismatch between these two things is where you can burn out and where you are probably wasting time, you know? So a lot of you are, haven't done this exercise, and I really want to encourage you to, to give it a real and um, you know, put some real, this is, this is worth energy. This is worth putting effort into because this helps you to spend your energy and effort in the right places.
Now, it might be hard for you to do this by yourself, so you may want to get together with a friend uh, to do this, share this uh, my blog post with them, and you could both read it together and really kind of work on it together, schedule some time with a friend to do this. If you have a life coach or a business coach, schedule some time with them to, to do this exercise. Have them keep you accountable to making sure you are doing this exercise. Because what I want for you is where every single day you show up and you work on your business, you have real confidence that the time and effort you're spending is also what brings the most value to people and therefore what brings the most value back to your business. Because here's, here's, here's the, the, the truth that a lot of us forget about, which is when you are giving value to people, you don't even need to ask them to share your business forward and they will share it. That's when you know you are really giving the most value to people. I know this might be a little hard to hear because maybe a lot of you are, are in the beginning stages of your business or maybe you're at, a, you're at a slump in your business where people aren't telling, talking to other people about your business. People aren't sharing your content forward or they're not talking about your business. Well, it's not their fault, you know? And, and it's not your fault either. It's just, it's nobody's fault. There's no blame needed. It's really, what's needed is for you to take an honest look at, okay, where did I, what did I do in the past that got people so excited that they were happy to talk about my business and to share my content without me even asking for it? Now, let me let me give you this example. I mean, this is a, you know, if you saved someone's life, okay, let's say you saved somebody's life, they're going to tell the whole world about you. You know, Shweta saved my life, or, or you know, or even, let, let's not be so extreme, Shweta made my life better. Shweta is, I'm seeing your comment here, so thank you. Shweta made my life better. And so, of course, I'm going to tell every everybody about her and her business. And so what did you do for that person that made them want to talk about you, okay? And what type of person were they that was the kind of person that would talk about you? Both of these questions are really important. What did you do for them? Which means you should do more of those kinds of things for more people. And what type of person were they that made them want to talk about you? Well, that means you should spend more time with these types of people. You should be reaching more of these people in your ads, in your Facebook ads. You should be looking for uh, collaborators who have that kind of person in your audience, you see. So if you are giving value to people, if you're giving enough value to people, your business will have natural word of mouth. And your business is not having natural word of mouth as much as you want, then you just need to ask, when did my business have natural word of mouth? And let's study what happened there? If it was a piece of content that went viral, well, what was the content? Now, I'm not talking about posting cute puppy photos and kitten photos. That's always going to go viral. I'm not talking about posting photos of yourself. Posting photos of yourself will always go viral. You know, your friends and family and your fans will, oh, great, great picture of you. That's not, that, those, don't, those things don't count. I'm talking about when you talk about your business, when you talk about when you share content that's giving a tip, giving tips, giving value to people, what types of content make people want to just share it spontaneously? Or what types of services do you provide that make people want to share it spontaneously? Okay, and then what types of people? That's the first question. What second question is what types of people are doing it? So spend more time with those people. Uh, run your ads to those people. Collaborate with people who have those kinds of people in their audience. If you answer these questions, okay, and then compare it to what are you spending your time doing, which means you need to be con conscious of it. I really want to encourage you to take one full week where you log your time because otherwise you really don't know where your time is going. It's so easy to be unconscious about where you're spending your energy and your time. It's, it's normal. It's natural. The flow for most human beings, the flow for most of us, is to not be conscious of where we're spending our time and our energy. That's just the flow because, you know, we just 
do things without being conscious. What is normal is unconscious living. That's normal. What is typical for just about everybody is autopilot living. Because if we, why is that? It's the reason why it's autopilot, why we live mostly autopilot is because it's easier on our brains to live on autopilot. So we don't question, what am I doing with my time and energy right now? What's going on and how does that compare with you know, what George was saying about where am I clearly getting the most impact for people? Right? And what kinds of people am I spending time with that, that where they're getting the most impact? Not every client of yours is an ideal client. right? Not every audience member of yours is an ideal audience member. You've got to ask yourself, who? Right? Who's getting the most value? Right? And you know they're getting the most value when they're sharing stuff spontaneously without you asking for it. Now, there are people who say, oh, will you please share this piece of content forward? And obviously, they're going to get people sharing it. You know, that I don't do that because I feel like I want, to, I, 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 I want to err on the side of, of you know, seeing more natural sharing. That's what I want to err on the side of. Or people who like beg people to talk about their business, beg people to refer them clients. And it's good to ask people to refer you clients. That's, but it's like you also, if you always, always have to ask everybody to refer you clients before you get any clients, it's exhausting, to be honest, right? So you would rather have a business where you don't even have to ask anybody and they just talk about you, right? You, you rather have content that we do, you don't ask people to subscribe and share and they just do it anyway. But because then you, you get to really see what's making an impact without you asking about it, right? So that's what I hope. Anyway, so that's, that's the end of the story. <laughs> Be aware of where you're spending your time and energy. That means you have to keep a careful log for one full week. Okay. I, I live by my calendar, so I'm really conscious of where my time goes, but I don't think most of you do. I don't think most of you live by your calendars. I mean, from what I can tell, from, what, from my conversations with, with many of you. So I'm, I'm sort of at a different level than, than most people. I, I literally live by my calendar. Like, just, okay, next thing, okay, that's what I'm doing next. Great, that's what I'm doing. But most of you need to just keep a careful track for one week of where your time is going. So every hour, say, ask yourself, what did I spend my last hour doing? Oh, I spent my last hour partly watching George's video and partly surfing Facebook. Okay, let's write that down. There's no judgment there. And I don't know. I don't know if watching my videos is the best use of your time. Maybe, maybe not, right? Um, it might be better for you just to read my blog post because that's faster than hearing me drone on and repeat myself 10 times, but that might be helpful to you. And this kind of video might actually be worthwhile your time because now you're more conscious and now you're gonna be more, uh, uh, a better matching between your time and energy spent expenditure and so much value you're creating for people that they're willing to just to talk about you. All right, so anyway, I look forward to your comments uh, and I'll, I'll save you time by ending this video now but I look forward to your comments and your questions and how this is, this is gonna help you. And I wanna thank those of you for joining me here. Um, Yul and Lisa, Shweta, Captain, Heather, Kim, Vicky, thank you all for joining. And um, let's see here, uh, Shweta says, uh, most engagement via, is via in-person gatherings and, and events and referrals via, okay, so great. So Shweta, that means that, that's great, that means, how, you know, if, if you're getting engagement there, let's, let's find in your calendar more time to go to the, the right types of events and, and to be conscious to make a goal around that, to say, am I going to the right types of events? Am I doing that event once a month at least or, or whatever it is your, your goal is going to be, right? And to find more types of events like that. And uh, you get referrals via calls. That's great. So if that's happening, that that's working for you, Great. That means you need to set a goal around how many calls uh, of that type of type of call will I be making each week? Okay. Um, and uh, and you said you've been taking a break on social media. Maybe, maybe that's good. You know, maybe that's maybe that wasn't the best use of your time. Even though I talk all of all the time about Facebook ads, you know, it's it's not for everybody, right? And so you might there might be other things that are useful. Um, Right. So Shreta also says a lot of business building tactics create expectations about enrollment, et cetera, which impact energy. Yeah, it's very subtle and we must be super. Yeah, that's true. 
So like if you're putting something out there, like, oh, I, 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 I hope I'm expecting that people are going to sign up and then it doesn't and it discourages you, right? Discouragement drains energy, right? And if it's, if it's not working, you are also clearly seeing what's not creating value for people, right? And so we need to stop doing those things. So, so that is a, that is very important to, to notice and stop doing. And thank you, Captain, here for your comment as well. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, and and Captain says this makes me remember that article about repairing our relationship to our productivity tools. Absolutely. Again, thank you, Captain, for sharing the link in the comments here and here on Facebook. And uh, Heather, thank you. Say, I think you're. Your videos are a good investment of time. I'm grateful. Thank you so much. And um, so Vicky says, can you talk a bit about adjusting to living by your calendar for, free, for a free-flowing soul? That, that's a really good question, Vicky. And, you know, I, I've, I've talked before about how, you know, there are different personality types. And, you know, just, just talking about Myers-Briggs, there's different typing systems. But Myers-Briggs, a lot of people I've heard of. It's the whole thing about, you know, for example, I am an, I am an INFJ in the Myers-Briggs type. And I'm very J. I'm very J stands for judging. Judging sounds bad, but judging just means that we're very, uh, you know, people like me are, are very into closing the loop, very into following a schedule, very into making sure we, we know what we're doing and, and, and having expectations be met, that kind of stuff. Whereas a lot of people, a lot of people in my audience, ironically, are, are P, which is perceiving, which is people who like things open-ended. They don't like to close loops as much. They don't like to follow a calendar, and they don't um, like to make decisions. They like to keep things more open-ended, whereas I like to make decisions quickly because that, that, that relieves my anxiety about the decision not having been made, right? But whereas perceivers, which are a lot of you, like to keep decisions open-ended, et cetera. And, and, you know, I, I think what I've noticed with a lot of my perceiver clients is that um, you need to be less, um, uh, less in terms of your calendar. I schedule everything to the half hour. I literally, if you look at my day, you know, I can't show you on screen right now, but if you look at my day, it's like every, every hour or every half hour, everything is scheduled. Everything is scheduled, like from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday for sure. And Saturdays, I've also scheduled. Actually, all seven days of mine are, are scheduled. On Saturday and Sunday, there's more personal time scheduled. And there's more flexibility there. But everything is scheduled. And I, I used to rebel against that. And, and I think all of us have some J and some P within us. So I used to rebel against that. But then I've learned to befriend it, befriend this idea. And of course, be wiser about what I schedule. Because what I basically have done is match my highest value activities with my schedule. So I feel like, God, every day I spend, I'm, I'm doing things that are high value, things that I, makes me happy, right? And I, I can see people being getting value from what I do. So, 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 of course, my J mind, my structured mind says everybody should do this, right? But I know it, that's not realistic for everybody. So I think for my, for my, for my P clients, I, they, they like to have more like, okay, here's my list for the day. And I just want to make sure that these are my high value activities for the day. And I would do these things sometime in the day. I don't necessarily have to have to do it, you know, at a structured time. Um, to me, that doesn't make sense because then you end up end up like flowing all day long. And then suddenly at night, you're like, didn't get to your list. So to me, that makes, gives me stress. I like to know when I'm doing what, but if a list works better for you, then, then go with the list. I just want to do what, I just want you to do what's best for you, what works for you. So have a list of high value activities. Like these are the high value activities. I'm going to just look at them when I can, and I'm going to do them when my energy says to do them. And so that might work better for you that way. So anyway, that's just a sh short way of doing things a little bit differently. Um, but I think if you don't make a calendar or you don't make a list, it's too easy to free flow and just do a lot of easy activities are often, some easy activities are high value, but many easy activities are low value you know, and, and low impact on the world and on your, on your own life too. So, so it just, you have to be really careful about doing things that are just, just flowing with what's easy and what's intuitive and what's in the moment it is, is, is it, it sounds spiritual to some people. You know, some people say, Oh, that sounds spiritual. That sounds intuitive. But 
it's also human you have to realize that the human being is very we are very good at lying to ourselves self-deception is one of our highest uh, genius areas and and so it's easy to self self-deceive to say oh i'm in the flow right now i'm intuitive i'm following the spiritual thing but then when you when you look at at the end of your life you realize oh so much of that was low value activities right because i didn't challenge myself challenging oneself to step up and give more value is typically not something that is free flowing and that is intuitive. Uh, uh, you, you might intuitive say it, but then you have a resistance against it because it's not something you've done before or something that's scary. That step stepping be beyond your comfort zone and 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 and, and uh, growing into a skill uh, that you know doing something you haven't done is always uncomfortable. Anyway, so I think I think you you get that, Vicky, as a as a leadership uh, consultant for sure. So anyway. Um, uh, Vicky says ENTP, yeah, so definitely a P there. Uh, yeah, uh, that makes sense. So Vicky, I think you might need to, to do a Vic, uh, the blog post or video about how can P's, how can people who are more free-flowing uh, create more high-value activities in, in their day? So that, that, I'd love to see that from you. So you will thank you so much for your comment as well. All right, everyone, <laughs> that's, it. That's, that's enough for today, and uh, I wish you um, more awareness today of where your energy is going and how you can rein it in when it's not as high value and how you can be more aware of, ooh, what's really making an impact on, on, on others. Take care, bye-bye.